We're here tonight to learn about prepping, to see if we're crazy or not. I don't think we are. <laughs> so we have something about gardening tonight, something about prepping, uh, getting ready, stocking up, and we have something about foraging. And Mr. Robert Tarr is going first this evening. Is your wife with you this evening? She is not. Okay. But she did all the brain work behind it, right? We both did. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep on the wife's good side. Does everybody know Mr. Robert Tarr? Thank you all very much for coming this evening. Um, my wife spent about 12 hours putting this talk together. She interacted with me while she did it. Um, she wanted this to be more personal and not just fact, 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 because she said people are going to get bored to death. If you just sit there and bore it out fast. So we're going to try to make this comfortable and easy for you to listen to, OK? Um, she was going to join me tonight, but she ended up having to work. Uh, she's a pharmacist. Uh, she understands science. She understands medicine. She knows what's going on. Um, of course, different people in the medical field have different views on this. One thing I do want to comment about, any of you that heard uh, Myron Shibley speak uh, several months ago, his whole talk on Marxism and how it's infiltrated our colleges, everything that's going on is tied to this. It's all tied to the one world government. It's all tied to bringing America down to its knees so that they can take us over. That's the goal. Um, prepping is something that you do to be prepared for what could occur. Now, it's really impossible for any individual or any family to prep for any possible scenario that can occur. But it's very important for all of us to stay in communication with each other so that we can help each other out because different people prep in different ways. Okay, So we have been prepping uh, for about two years, actually longer than that, but I'm, I'm going to go to the two-year mark. And this is to share with you some of what we've learned in the last couple of years. Okay, Maybe it can help you, maybe it can save you some time. Around on the <coughs> seat, you will find a, a handout to accompany the talk. Okay, um, pick one up if you don't have one. There should be enough for each family for sure to have one, and maybe some people can have two. But um, this information is not conspiracy theory. These are facts. Hours and hours of research went into this. Okay, um, so here we go. Now let me see where I am in my notes here. Now, keep in mind, we're not trying to scare people. We're not trying to get panic. The idea is to be prepared in the event that you need resources. Now, I talked to someone recently, and he said, well, I'm fine. I have lots of money saved up, and I don't care what the cost of food is. I can pay whatever I need to pay for it. So I'm ready. And that's, that was his stand, and he wasn't about to go collect anything else. The issue is, the dollar is losing its value, and money may be worthless. We hope that doesn't happen, but it could happen. And if it does happen, how much money you have isn't going to matter when you go to the grocery store and you need certain foods, and they're not there. So something to think about. We can see what's going around, on around the world around us. And we want to be able to take care of our families here in Northeast Ohio. We know we can be snowed in in the winter. And we know in the summer we can have electrical outages. Uh, one event was the grid was down August 14, 2003. And that knocked power out of northeastern U.S. quadrant, quadrant and part of Canada for an extended period of time. Um, uh, now without people working, with many people not working, with fuel prices going high, the food chain supply, as well as medical and other commodities, are falling short of demands and needs. Think about the baby formula issue that's current. Um, think about food processing plant fires that occurred several weeks ago. And think about um, farmers being paid to not grow crops. And there has been some reports stating that farmers have said, well, we are growing our crops. But I know two people that I work with that live right next to farms, and they're not growing a thing. So it's, it's 
wishy-washy information. It's hard to know. So, so, so prepping means you're prepared when something happens. When they say the electricity, the electricity's out and you can't get gas for your car, it's too late to go try to find gas for your car. You need to have some spare fuel before that day occurs. Um, so, anyway. Um, on May 21st, 2020, food, food insecurity expert Sarah Manker, a CEO of Grow Intelligence, testified to the United Nations Security Council that at this point, so this was May, just this May 21st, this year, the world has only about a 10-week supply left of wheat. Mm -hmm. I, I just heard that on Fox News like an hour before I left. Okay. Because, and because so much of the wheat is coming from Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine. exactly. All right. Um, digital food rationing has begun in Iran. Now, I don't know what's involved with digital food rationing, but it isn't good, I can assure you. I'm sure it's very associated to the whole digital cash plan idea. Um, in our handout, we have links to websites and some alternate news sources. These are not conspiracy theorists who calmly and fact calmly and factually, these people calmly and factually present the current world state of affairs as we obviously live in a global economy with most of our goods being supplied from outside of our country. Some of these videos and websites seem more extreme than others. You really need to listen and process what they're saying and sift through it with your own filters, but do the research. Also, again, keep in mind that none of us can prepare for every possible scenario. The first and most important thing is to get right with God. It is going to take a miracle to get us out of this. Now, we may not get out of it, but people, I, I, I misunderstood this, people were saying, well, we're in the end times, and I would say, well, we're not in the end times, because the end times aren't until after Satan is bound and cast into the abyss and we have a thousand years of peace. Well, that's the end of the world after that. The end times refer to the end of a time period prior to the end of the world. So the, I do now, after doing a little more research, believe we are in the end times. We are in the end of an era. One of my friend's daughters put it this way. She said, it's time for the 2,000-year cleansing. And her mother said, well, what are you talking about? Well, first, there was Noah and the ark. And 2,000 years later was the Ten Commandment tablets. And 2,000 years later, Jesus was crucified. And it's now 2,000 years after the crucifixion. So something's happening. Something's happening. So we need to take heed to that and get right with God. Okay? Um, anything you do to prepare is a start and is better than doing nothing. You will most likely be thankful you did something to prepare. If, if any of you haven't started prepping at all, that's okay. You can start. Those of you who have been prepping, continue, okay? If you think this is all foolish, that's okay. But let me know that, because if you knock on my door, I'm going to say, sorry. <laughs> you need to go the other way. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure that's how I'll answer. It depends on the person and what their needs are. But I do know many preppers that have the feeling that they have been informing people to prep, they're, they're, they're whoever, or associates, whatever, and they're not prepping, and they're like, you know what? They're going to be out of luck when the time comes, if it comes, because... We've got a network, and we have to stick together. Yes, ma'am. Um, I hope you don't mind if I just share something with everybody. When you said about getting right with God, it just reminded me. By all means. I was doing some work for our church in Painesville, going up and down the streets. We were passing out uh, pamphlets trying to get people to come back to church okay. um, before Easter because it's, we're new in that area, and we're trying to get people to come to God. And while I was doing it, it's just like... Occasionally, you know, I get a word from God. I know because it's like a light bulb just went off in my head. And the scripture of the whole Bible told me to look at scripture, Ezekiel 4, 17. 4, 17. And if you look it up, I just looked up the phone so I could share. Sure. And 417 is, so they will lack food and water. It says, for food and water will be scarce. They will be appalled at the sight of each other and will waste away because of their sin. Yes. So, that's why I was doing church work, trying to get people to come to church. That's what came to me. So I just want to share that. So that's directly from God, because out of the whole Bible, I wouldn't have not come up with that myself. Very good. So. 
Um, just some information. Not really on that note, but um, I was just talking to somebody the other day about the story of Joseph and his interpretation of um, the Pharaoh's dream. And he specifically said, you need to be preparing. There is going to be famine. Right. You know, they told, he told you how to do it, and it's going to repeat itself. Right. And that's what people need to do. Right, and at the time they had to prepare for three years of famine, and they had three years of famine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Don't go into debt prepping. If you have the money and the means to do some prepping, I would recommend turn some of that available that you have in the bank into usable commodities that you can use or barter with. Um, again, the dollar is losing its value and having it all in the bank. You know, I went to the bank not too long ago and I withdrew $1,300. And the teller looked at me, it was near the end of the day, she says, Robert, you're running me dry. $1,300. If you get a check for $6,000 and go into the bank and want to cash it, they're not going to have the cash to give it to you. You have to plan a day in advance. They have to get the money in in advance. They do not have all this money there to hand you. Um, there's also some talk that anything over $600 is being monitored. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I've heard that. Yes. It is accurate. Key bank. Key bank. So, so try to do smaller withdrawals daily so that they can't track that you're withdrawing all your money. Um, so, excuse me. Oops. While, while there's still items available, it would be a smart time to take some of your, your savings, your investments, whatever, and, and use them to do some prepping. And there's lots, lots to do for prepping. Prepping takes a lot of time, and it costs a lot of money. But you've got to be willing to, to... Some weeks ago, Tom Hack commented, he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, we have to change gears. We have to change our mindset. We have to change our interests. We have to do things that are different than what we're accustomed to. Now, I'm an avid model railroader. I haven't done a whole lot of model railroading in the last six or nine months because we've been busy prepping. Tom Hack mentioned he was an avid baseball fan. He hasn't been to a baseball game in two years because he's changing gears. He's switching focus. So you have to think about this, the idea of maybe switching focus to achieve what you need to achieve. Um, start small. Figure out how much food you need for, for a day. <coughs> multiply it by a week. And try to get a week's supply. After that, go to a two-week supply. Um, most of the foods... Hang on a second. Sorry. This, the, the current supply chain is on a three-day refill cycle. There's only enough food in the entire system for three days at a time. But enough food for your household. So, so get enough food for your household for a week, then get enough for a second week. Uh, you know, back in the day when, you know, my parent, when I was growing up, my parents had a one- to two-week rotating menu as part of their economic plan. They would shop for one to two weeks at a time. Um, when you have completed a two-week supply, go to a month supply, then go to a three-month supply, then go to a six-month supply, then go to a year supply. Um, you have to remember to rotate your stock and your inventory. That's very important, otherwise it just goes to waste. And you can use your supply, but you also have to think about what can you eat. Now, there's some of the, the resources we have on here, uh, like, like Patriots, um, Food for Patriots. They make really nice menus and really good freeze-dried foods, but my wife can't eat them. She has allergies to apples. She has allergies to yeast. She can't eat um, there's something else she can't eat. There's a lot of things she can't eat. So we, we have to be real careful what we stock in our house. Now my son and I might be able to eat some, but we have to have food she can eat too. So you have to just keep all this in mind when you're preparing all this. Um, don't forget about comfort foods. We have chocolate in my house. <laughs> yes, sir. I've heard like uh, advertisements for a company called My Patriot Supply. And they'll send you like three or four, depending on how much you want to spend. That's it's supposed to be 25. It's supposed to last 25 years. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And you look there, that there are information on this information sheet. That's on Red there. Eagle Politics. The guy talks about that. Right. At, that does Red Eagle Politics. Right. Yes. Yes. It's, it's good. Robert, I don't know if, if you yeah. want to 
like us to ask questions as you go, or if you'd like us to hold them. Let's okay. hold them today. I would say let's hold them. Okay. And, yeah. and you're not going anywhere today. I'm not calling anyone so today. Everybody's sticking around for the I don't weekend. have to be at work till 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we got all night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So here we go. Um, so thank you. Um, so whatever your favorite food or beverage is, make sure you get some extra of that. You're going to have to have some comfort food. You've got to try to stay sane through all this. You have to. Even if it means having a little hobby, whether it's knitting or sewing or building ships or working on models or whatever you gardening, whatever. Taking care of a little fish, a little aquarium, do something. Because, because this stuff, you have to occasionally step back from it in order to stay sane. Because it will drive you crazy. <coughs> If you let it. So, so, just keep in mind, keep your sanity, and it's okay to do that. I would say start now, don't wait. Prices are going up daily, we can see that. Okay? Um, once you get past your one week food supply, you're going to need to start thinking about longer term storage and rotating stock. Buy some canned milk, dried milk, in foil packages. Now, this is important a big cardboard box of milk spoils sooner than and absorbs the moisture sooner than the small foil packets. So you need to think about that when you're buying food. Just buying a bunch of bulk isn't necessarily the smartest thing to do. Sometimes you're better off paying more for individually wrapped items because they're going to keep better and you can use smaller quantities at a time. Okay. Um, we put our flour, sugar, pasta, and grains into plastic zipper or twist tie bags, then into totes, then into a cool basement. Another option is dry canning rice to kill any eggs or larvae. You can look it up online, but basically it's putting the rice into a dry mason jar, heating them in the oven long enough to sterilize but not cook the rice. Coffee, tea, and other beverages can be bought in single-serve packages. Also sugar, instant coffee, and alcohol can be bought in small containers or put into small containers to be used for bartering, along with cigarettes and lighters if desired. There's a couple things that are important. Cigarettes, Lighters and alcohol. They're very important for bartering. <laughs> very. These are addictive things. They're very important for bartering. You know, if somebody comes to your house to break in and, and you, you throw them a pack of cigarettes and a bottle of liquor, they might just turn around and leave. They might. It's worth having it on hand. Things can get very ugly very fast. And again, this isn't to scare you. It's, it's to, to make you aware of what could happen, okay? Um, okay. Okay, so storing is important. You have to store heavy and glass items on the bottom shelves. You might have to buy additional shelving to store your goods. Don't put glass things up high. If something should rock the boat, whether it's an earthquake, a bomb, whatever, you don't want the shelves to fall over and the glass things to be coming down and splattering all over. You want the glass on the bottom, so at least if it breaks, it stays in a local spot. Don't forget, you're going to have to walk through that room. Um, lighter things in, in, up on top, middleweight things in the middle, just common sense with stacking things. But try to keep in mind, when you stack your products, rotation. Don't stack things so tight that you can't reach in and shift or change. You have to leave airspace so you can move things and change around and, and rotate the stock and the inventory. Um, watch for sales and buy lots of extra to preserve or save. You will also need to start looking at alternative meat protein sources. This combination, rice, beans, and corn together, can provide complete proteins. But think about how much of that you really want to eat. We might need to live on that someday, but I like meat. Look at canned and dried meat options. Frozen works too, as long as we have power. Um, set up a buying relationship with a local farmer and meat producer. Buy from them now so they can get to know you, and you can continue from, to buy from them as grocery stores empty. Okay, it takes effort to do this. It takes time to do this. Um, we keep a few chickens for eggs. But we don't have a rooster because we're not allowed to have a rooster. Okay? So what are we going to do if we need more chickens? We don't have any fertilized eggs. So we buy fertilized eggs. 
Uh, what's that? <laughs> 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 okay, that's funny. Um, so we buy fertilized eggs and we rotate our fertilized eggs. If we ever have to incubate, we can do that and, and have more chickens. It's part of our prepping. Okay. Um, and that's a family that we, we met. Uh, there was a roadside stand that we stopped at. We got to know the family, and now we're on a regular buying basis with them. And it works out very well. Um, you know, think about the bird flu. This was a planned flu. They've arranged the bird flu to incorporate it into humans. Okay? This is serious stuff. Um, we also make slake or water glass eggs. That's what these are. The, the, the correct term for this is slake. Um, S L A K E D, slaked. You can, these can store up to 18 months at room temperature. Okay, this is slaked, S L A K E D, or water glassed. Water glassed eggs are actually a little bit different than this but you can look up the process on YouTube. Um, it's probably on our list. I'm guessing it's on our list. Um, these can be stored up to 18 months. These are uncooked, fresh eggs, unwashed. Unwashed is key. Once you wash them, the chemicals that the chicken has on the eggshell will not protect it anymore. So you put them in this unwashed, okay? This is canned pork. We do pork and chicken. This is done with a canner. I'll get into that in a little bit here. As long as I was showing you the food, I thought I'd show you that. And that doesn't refrigeration? <coughs> no, no refrigeration. It goes right it's, on the it's, like can, it's canned like when you buy a can of meat at the store. Okay. Yeah. But you put in what you do it as far as preserving Time or and effort. Yeah. Well, the, the preservative is that it's boiled to the right temperature and it's and it's and it's sealed. That's the preservative. It's just like the canning process in the factories. Um, this is salted pork. This is pork that's been dried and salted. Because you can come up and look at these things later when they're done. <coughs> just don't touch the foods and, and don't touch the radio. You can touch everything else out here. <laughs> um, now. Uh, um, it's not that I'm worried about germs, it's that I'm worried about if something gets damaged, and, I, and my wife spent lots of time doing this, <laughs> and I have to go home and say, honey, we broke the jar of whatever. I don't want to have to tell her that, so let's, let's not go there. Okay. Now, this is important. Um, oh, here we There are several pork and beef growers around. They're a little further out. You can look them up online and try to contact them to buy locally. Canned meats are also a go-to. Remember the manual can opener. Remember, you might be without electricity. Don't count on your electric appliances. Assume you're not going to have them. If you have them, that's great. Um, the prices of um, beef, ham, pork, chicken, can have all gone away up three times as much as two years ago. Many are already not available. Many shelves are empty. Some Walmart workers have advised people to buy now because they aren't there are not replacements at the warehouses right now. The warehouses are empty. What happened is when, when, the, when the war started in Ukraine and a lot of the food supply stuff was being used, Ukraine and Russia, they're not supplying now. So those supplies are being used up and things haven't been being shipped. So now we're starting to see shortages. So that's what's happening. It took several months, but that's what's happening. Um, okay, now you have to be careful of online canned meat ads. Uh, many of them are scams. Uh, they say it's being offered by a company like Hormel or Walmart, but you need to go directly to the company website of Hormel or Walmart or whatever manufacturer they're claiming it is and see what's being offered. Um, these scams set up a fake website, you send in your money, and you never see the food, and you don't see your money either. And I will be <coughs> fair. We have been scammed before, my wife and I. We know that it happens. Okay? Uh, so you have to be careful of that. Um, 
you can buy ready-made freeze-dried meals ready to eat, like the um, Four Patriots. That was one that was brought up earlier. Uh, there's a couple links for those on the handout. Uh, we put in a vegetable garden. Now, if you haven't started, you can grow in pots or on a balcony. You can grow potatoes or sweet potatoes in bags of soil stood on end. You can grow in totes. You'll need to get some gardening tools. Think nutrient-dense foods. Sweet potatoes, potatoes, beets, squash, pumpkin, carrots, that type of thing. In a cold or cool basement, these vegetables keep nine months or more. We have a whole pumpkin from last October on our basement floor that's still good. It's still good. Now, I'll tell you, we had four. Three of them spoiled. We got one left. Okay? It's important not to try to store damaged fruits or vegetables because they will not keep well. Okay? Uh, we have a 20-gallon metal trash can in the basement layered with wood chips and alternating layers of winter squash, onions, potatoes, etc. And that's a form of root cellar. Uh, I bought carts with wheels so that we can roll these cans around when we need to move things around in the basement or rotate stock. Okay? Um, learn how to can and freeze foods. Freezing is good, but again, won't keep if power goes out and more than a, for more than a couple of days. Uh, now, there's well, I will get into the power supply thing. Um, you can get a pressure canner and use it now so you know how to. Best options are, probably write this down, I don't know if it's in the notes, All-American or Presto. They're two pressure cookers. Okay, my wife did hours of research on pressure cookers. Okay. So it's All-American or Presto. Those are the two she found to be practical for homeowners to use. Uh, we have the Presto. Others, other people we know have the All-American. You have to look them up, see what will work for you. We also have a dehydrator and we make jerky. Uh, we can make dried fruits and vegetables. Some people have in, in, uh, invested in freeze dryers. We don't have a freeze dryer, so I really don't know about those. Um, you have to get, sometimes you have to get some special tools to process the vegetables and the meats, depending on what you already have at home. Um, get bulk canning salt, 20 to 50 pounds to keep on hand. Learn to salt pork and dry meats in salt. It's easy to learn from online videos, and, and that's what I showed you earlier. This is a, my wife took like an eight pound pork loin and, and cut it up and dried it. And we, we tied it, she did all this, she seasoned it, tied it, and dried it, and we, we, we've got a handful of these, okay. Well, you don't eat the string. No, it's dried and you and you it's cooked. It's like a big piece of jerky. It's like a big piece of jerky that you would slice and eat. Correct. Right. It's it's cooked already. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, don't forget about your pets and your animals. All another issue. Okay. At least a six-month food supply for your pets and animals. Now, this is what we run into. We've got our pets for our food supply. We have to feed our pets. So we plant food that the pets can eat because we have to be able to feed the animals that we want to eat. You have to think of all this. Like I said, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. But it's all food for thought, pun intended. <laughs> okay. Um, some dried grains and foods are hard to store long period. They can get moldy and stale if not properly sealed or they get wet. They can lead to poisoning in the animal. Also, vermin or uh, vermin are storage problems. Uh, vermin are a storage problem. When the restaurants in Cleveland closed down during COVID lockdowns and dumpsters were empty, many suburbs were blessed with new rat populations, populations that they had never seen before. And just so you know, Rats chew through plastic to get to food. We have found 20-gallon metal bins to work best for storage in our shed and in our garage. So again, 20-gallon garbage cans. I mean, they make bigger garbage cans than any smaller ones. You have to get what's going to work for you. Um, but we did have mice chew through our plastic bins that we had in the garage with our chicken food in it. Mice eat $50 worth of all mice. Oh. Eat the mice. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Each person needs one gallon of water per person per day to be lightly more, slightly more comfortable and do some bathing and cooking, at least three gallons of water per person per day. Extend that out for the members of your household, get jugs and, and fill with filtered water. Uh, here in Willoughby, the city routinely sends the fire department around to flush hydrants <coughs> with one in our front yard. That means dirty, brown, unusable water at our house for the entire day. Now, I have a water filter system in my house and the water's still brown. And I have a good system. Okay, so we don't use that water other than, you know, for like the toilet flushing. We don't drink it, we wait. And this is what we wait for. Um, okay, dirty brown, and, all right, so with one in our front, a fire hydrant in our front yard, we have dirty brown and usable water at our house for the entire day until the rest of the city gets home from work and uses their evening water supplies and clears the main lines. So we, I used to work uh, afternoon shifts, so I was home all day and couldn't use the water. So we have uh, six five-gallon jugs of water and 10 or so individual gallon jugs just to have for spare water for when this happens so that we have our drinking water. Um, but very important is long-term water collection and filtration. We're working on a rainwater catchment system using 300 gallon IBS totes. You can check those out, it's a whole process. Um, we're gonna hook them up to our downspouts. Um, the potential we'd use is gravity filter in house like, Ber in, gravity filter in house like Berkey, B-E-R-K-E-Y, or Alexa Pure, A-L-E-X-A-P-U-R-E, -E, and there are some others. You can look up comparisons online. Um, we will also use the rainwater for our animals, to water our animals. Um, we have filter straws for short-term emergency. Um, these are on the earth. You can look at these, you can handle these. Again, my wife spent a lot of time researching what would be a quick, good filter straw use. These are reasonably priced. We gave them out for Christmas presents last year to everybody in the family. Um, if this one's open, you can open it and look at it. Okay, this is for individual filtration of water, and this particular system takes everything out, but it's just, just for little bits at a time. Excuse me. Yes. Can I add one thing? Um, I bought a Berkey uh, about a month ago, and I found something online that looked better. And the Berkey, when I bought it, was four hundred and seventy-one dollars for the system. Um, and then I sent it back about a week later, and it's now about five hundred and fifty dollars in that short amount of time. But what I found was a place called JustWater.me. And what I like about it is they sell, they were, they made these filters for um, third world countries and we now need it here. And you can buy two um, food grade plastic buckets from Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever uh, or online and you cut a hole and the guys are from Texas. It's a um, ceramic filter. It comes with a little brush and you fill it up from the top and it uses gravity go down to the bottom and the filters are about $70, which is a lot better than the Berkey. Okay, that's good to know. So that's called JustWater.me? Correct, and you okay. they do not put their prices online. You have to call and you'll get a very nice southern <coughs> gentleman that will answer every question you've ever had. That's terrific, because I'm a people person. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, that's good. I like that. Thank you. How often do you have to replace that filter zone? 10,000 gallons, and the Berkey was 3,000. Okay. Um, 
in a pinch, water can be, you know what, it's on the sheet. The water can be purified with iodine. The whole process is explained on the handouts. I'm not going to go through it now because for me it's very complicated. And my wife said, there's nothing to it. It's just this much per this and this much for that. And she's the chemist, not me. <laughs> so it's on the sheet. Medications. Stock up on all over-counter supplies. Uh, Tylenol, ibuprofen, cough and cold remedies, vitamins, topicals, rubbing alcohol, 90% is best if you can find it. Um, Bactine, bandages, iodine. Um, my wife said, and iodine tincture, T-I-N-C-T-U-R-E. I don't know what that is. She said, ask her at the pharmacy counter. It's alcohol and an iodine solution. Okay. Thank you, that's good. The other way around. Okay. Uh, large and small bandages are very, bandages are very important. Um, there are already many different shortages in medications, devices as syringes, and even certain bandages and tubings in the hospitals. My wife's been talking to me about what they've had to do in the hospital to make up for the supplies they can't get. <coughs> this is nuts. I'm telling you, th this is nuts what's going on. There's no reason for this other than the fact that it's intentional. That's the only conclusion I can come to. Um, okay. <laughs> ask your physician, if you can, ask your physician for a six-month prescription of any maintenance medication you take regu regularly. Now, this will not work for pain medications or narcotic, narcotics. They're not going to give you a six-month supply for those. Um, take your vitamin supplements, especially zinc, vitamin D, vitamin C, and consider working on getting healthy. Um, if you're healthy, it's easier to get through stress. Um, you might want to start with cutting back on sugar and processed foods. Avoid processed oils, especially anything labeled vegetable oils. Use coconut, olive, avocado, butter, lard, bacon fat, and beef tallow. No Crisco. Crisco's not healthy. I grew up on Crisco. Okay. Um, eat fresh greens and fresh meats, not processed. Uh, sometimes you have to eat something that's processed. The, the, the key really to the, to the beef, to the meat, is to eat what is, has been um, free-ranged or open-ranged fed. The problem with the stuff fed in the pens is that whatever feed they're giving it, if there's chemicals in that feed, it sticks to their fat. The free-range animals don't have those chemicals and their fat is healthier, so their fat doesn't hurt you. So it's okay to eat that fat. Uh, if you smoke, try to cut, back, try to quit, or at least cut back. Uh, if you if you like to drink alcohol on a daily basis, try to go down to two two drinks a week if you can. Because here's the deal: you're not going to be able to get the stuff. If you get used to it now, if you back off now, it'll be easier to adjust later. It'll be a little bit less stress later. At least now, if you back off and you just, I gotta have that extra chocolate bar. It's there. I can do it. It may not be that way in six months or nine months. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Um, you might want to consider uh, start starting intermittent fasting, like from after supper until breakfast, no snacks. Mm -hmm. Then increase the fasting time, like until lunch. Wait till lunch. Uh, as you accustom your body to fasting, it gets easier and will go better for you if we need to end up in a severe food shortage. Remember, if there is a severe food shortage and you have a six-month supply, if you limit what you eat, you might be able to stretch that to seven, eight, or nine months. Okay. Um, walk, move, get out into sunshine. Now this is very important. Deep infrared radiation from the sun promotes healing in your brain and in your mitochondria, the power plants of your cells. The kind of sunlight that warms you through your clothes can be for as little as 30 minutes a day. Multiple studies have shown hugely increased rates of healing for even long-term illnesses with daily, regular exposure to the sunlight, including long-term COVID. My dad lived to be 92. He was going to be 93. He loved sitting out in the sun. It kept, it kept him healthy. My mom used to say, you got to go to exercise class. you got to go to exercise. He would go to exercise class and sit outside the class. He didn't want to exercise. But he'd go sit out in the sun. And he outlived her. <laughs> she didn't go sit out in the sun. <laughs> I don't think she went to exercise class either. Anyway. Um, <coughs> so 
Strive for eight hours of sleep a night. Get books about herbal and home remedies to treat minor illnesses and injuries. Um, stock up on personal hygiene, soap, shampoo, toothpaste, deodorant, cleaning and laundry supplies. Baking soda can be used for much of this. Baking soda can be used for cleaning, teeth brushing, deodorant in a pinch, washing vegetables, decontaminating pesticides off of foods or whatever. Um, stock up on baking soda. If water sanitation becomes an issue, like after a flood, keeping clean will help you keep healthier. Look at alternate ways of doing laundry. Not many people line dry anymore, but sunlight helps sterilize clothing. It can be done even in winter. My mother-in-law used to hang her clean baby diapers out in the winter until they froze. Then she'd bring them in to finish drying in the kitchen or bathroom. Uh, so get, get a clothesline and clothespins. I mean, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We're not going to use our washing machines. Um, keep a good supply of paper products, toilet paper, napkins, paper towels. If there's a shortage of soap and or water, we will want disposable stuff. Don't forget diaper wipes or flushable wipes and feminine supplies. My niece, a couple weeks ago, went to six stores to find tampons. Six stores. This just happened. Okay. The other thing is, a tampon can be used to plug a bullet wound until help arrives. Okay. It'll, it'll plug the wound. Okay. It's a good emergency tool to have. Um, make sure your family members have weather appropriate clothing, up to date sizes, not worn out. The vast majority of our clothing supply comes from out of this country. If you need new jeans, shirts, coats, socks, underwear, get them now. Be sure your children have the appropriate next sizes. Shoes and boots. Sore, wet feet make you hurt all over. You want to know what the bottom line is? If your hands are warm and dry, if your feet are warm and dry, and if your head is warm and dry, you will stay comfortable. Once any one of those three gets damp or chilled, you're going to be miserable. Okay. Um, Keep mending supplies, thread needles, scissors, patches, and darning supplies for socks, shoe glue, and Gorilla Glue, and duct tape. I'm going to show you what happens. We had our go bag in the attic. Our attic gets very hot. This roll of duct tape is useless. It, it's been heat treated. It's all melted into one big thing, like it might be able to be used for a hockey puck. <laughs> but other than that, okay. So how you store stuff is important. This is an old go bag. I brought it on purpose so you can see what happens when stuff gets old. Um, you can consider buying first aid books and books on food prep and storage, how to butcher clean animals, if that's something you think you might need or be interested in, and the tools to go with them. Now, this is important too. Keep cash on hand in the house. 50s, 20s, 10s, 5s, and 1s. At least $1,000 on hand. Banks can freeze your account at any time. Keep your money well hidden, not in your dresser drawer or your sugar bowl. But be sure all responsible adults have access to it and know where it is. And don't tell your neighbors that you have it. Okay? It's a private thing. It's your business. Nobody needs to know. Uh, I would recommend only a couple 50s. Uh, uh, just my recommendation. 100 in singles. 200 in fives. 200 in tens. Um, the rest in 20, and then 250s, just $250 bills, and the rest in 20s. Once you get over 1,000, if you want to put a couple hundreds in there, you can do that. If you decide to have 2,000 spare, whatever. But you want to have small bills to be able to barter with and do stuff with. Um, alternate heat and power sources. Think about how to keep warm. Fireplace, wood stove, gloves, hat, blankets. Remember ventilation. We don't want any carbon monoxide poisoning. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, we put a wood, wood burner soapstone in our basement for the Y2K scare, and the uh, Woodstock Soapstone Company is on the sheet. That's the brand we got. We're very happy with it. Uh, it can keep our basement. Uh, we put it in the basement. Uh, we have a ranch. It keeps our basement at about 70 degrees, and it keeps the second floor between 45 and 50. Um, we also have a fireplace on the first floor. It uses a lot of wood as an open fire, but it does warm the house. Um, you can also open a, a kitchen, a gas kitchen stove. If you open the oven door, you open a couple windows and crack too. The, the gas oven will help heat a room easily. Okay. 
Uh, you need to think about other options, a camp stove maybe, kerosene heater. You will need fuel for those and ventilation. Kerosene should only be used outside. Electric space heaters, of course, won't work if there's no power. You have to think about that, especially if you have electric heat in your house. What are you going to do? Okay. Um, for cold overnight, you can set up a tent in the living room and put everyone in it. The tent will help you hold in the body heat. Um, get sleeping bags. You can bring them along if needed or add them to your bed. Check their cold ratings and get ones for sub-freezing temperatures. What I have found over the years with camping is that if I buy a bag that says it's going down to 30 degrees, when it goes down to 30 degrees, I'm freezing. So I found I have to buy a bag that has that's really lower than what they say. Uh, so get one for sub-temperatures. Um, Get sleeping bags, you can bring them along if you need to or add them to your bed. Check their cold ratings and get ones for sub-freezing temperatures. Get extra blankets and towels. They can be shared or bartered if needed, and you may be having unexpected guests to help you eat down your extra stores. You don't know who you're going to need to help, so it's okay to have some extra supplies. Favorite flashlights. Flashlights, the brighter the better. If you have to go outside at night with no city light, you want to be able to see very far store appropriate batteries for those lights. I would buy them now. When the lights go out, there are no batteries in the stores. Again, that's prepping. You already have your batteries. Oops, the lights are out. Let's run to the store. Oops, the store is closed. There's no electricity. Oops, what are we going to, uh, you know, just think ahead a little bit. Um, make sure you have appropriate batteries for the flashlights. Um, keep them. If you want to, you can consider rechargeable batteries so that when the electricity goes back on, you can recharge them. That's an option. Keep candles, matches, lighters, oil lamps, and lanterns. Lanterns and oil lamps can burn multiple fuels. We have many oil lamps at our house. Um, they can burn lamp oil, cooking oil, kerosene, lighter fluid, and they can even burn our old olive oil. I mix it with the lighter fluid. Okay, because sometimes when the old olive oil is, I'm Italian, I have olive oil. When the, when the olive oil gets old, we can't use it. We save it and use it for lamps. Um, now, this is what Crisco is good for. You can stick a wick down the center of a Crisco can. Now, I don't know if the Crisco cans are plastic now, but if they are, you might want to put it into a metal can, uh, melt it, put it into a metal can. But if you put a wick down the middle of a Crisco, it is a wonderful light source. A wick down the middle of a Crisco can. That Crisco oil burns like a candle. Okay? And it won't harden your arteries while it's burning like a candle. Okay? Um, there's more information on Crisco uh, and on the handout. Uh, and stock up on fuels in boxes of kitchen matches. So that's something you have to remember. If you have something that takes fuel, if it's your generator or whatever it is, you've got to have spare fuel for it, too. So you just got to keep all that in mind. Um, if you have a generator, it's not a good idea to run your lights at night in a dark neighborhood. It invites crime to you because people know you're prepped. Just leave the lights out. You might have your heater running, your furnace running, that's fine, but at night just leave it dark with the rest of the neighborhood. We don't have a generator yet. We've been generator shopping. We're looking at it. Uh, things to consider is the wattage. You need to cover the highest surge of an appliance turning on. That means when your furnace turns on, like let's say you have a, you know, a 10 amp furnace motor, but it, it has a surge draw. When it turns on, it might be drawing 45 or 55 amps. You have to have a, a supply of electricity that can handle that surge draw for your refrigerator, your furnace, and um, whatever other major appliance you might have, your refrigerator, furnace. I, know, I forgot the other one, but anyway. Um, plan on spending about $3,000 for a generator. There's lots of them available. You can see there's different fuel sources. There's gasoline, propane, kerosene, natural gas. There is solar. The, I have a problem with the solar ones because the batteries for the solar ones, if they freeze, they're no good. So if, if the price is low on the solar ones. That's low. Well, maybe they're more now. 9,000. Okay, so plan on 9000 for your generator. Plan on going to the neighbor's house that has the generator. 
This is why we got to commune. Thank you. Well, this is why we've got to commute. This is why we've got to keep in touch and be able to help each other. Okay, it's very important. Um, now, the other thing is um, the, uh, some, some can be very noisy, which isn't bad if they're outside, except it draws attention to your house that it has one. Uh, and you need appropriate hookups and wiring for your house, and sometimes you'd hire an electrician to do all that. Solar-powered ones charge a battery and are much quieter. Again, need the appropriate wattage and hookups for the battery. Look for lithium iron phosphate. That's important. If you're going to get a solar-powered solar powered electric source, you want lithium iron phosphate battery, not lithium ion. They're two very close names, and they're very easy to get confused. Sure. Lithium, iron, I-R-O-N, phosphate, P-H-O-S, P-H-A-T-E. That's the one you want. You do not want lithium ion. Both those batteries, either one, must be stored above 40 degrees. Okay. The phosphate batteries last longer than the lithium ion. They have more chargeable, recycled charges. They store more power, and they don't randomly overheat and explode as some lithium ion batteries can do. Um, gasoline for vehicles. Okay. We drive big vehicles in my house. We recently bought a little old Honda so that we can save on our gas fuel because if it goes up to $8 a gallon, I'm not driving then to downtown Cleveland for work on $8 a gallon, so we bought a little Honda. You also have to consider having extra fuel for your vehicle. I would recommend at least two tankfuls. Okay. Now, there's a place called Charbon Oil in Charbon, and there's one in Painesville. And on Vine Street, Circle K sells 100% gasoline. If you get alcohol-free gas, it stores almost indefinitely. Gasoline with 10% ethanol lasts a few months, and at, most, at the most, before it breaks down in the vehicle, won't run well. Um, and again, you can get this at Chardon. They also sell these gas containers. Uh, you know, you can, if you get regular gas, you can put this stuff called a stay bill in it, and that'll keep it from going bad. It's a little thing you get at the park store. Right. So, it's stable will last um, 12 months. You have to redo it and it might not be good after that. And there's a whole other process to take ethanol gasoline and make it into 100% pure gasoline, but I'm not going to get into that now because it's a whole great. So, I don't want you guys blowing up your house. When you have the pure gasoline and you go to use it, what do you add to it and how much? Do you have well, to add something to it? Say the first part. If you're buying this pure gasoline, you don't have to add anything to it. Oh, you don't. One hundred percent pure gasoline keeps almost indefinitely. And you can use it in your car. You can use no it problem. in your car, your lawnmower, whatever you need to. Okay. You only have to add um, Chardon oil. Ethanol in your gas. Right? Okay. Water Street, Route Six in Chardon. Also, Circle K on Vine Street, but they have an attitude in there. I don't like to shop there. Whole gas will not last. Whole gas. But alcohol added, but regular gasoline loses octane very fast. I mean, a few years. I mean, it's probably good for a few years. That's what I said. It's good up to two oh, years. I thought you said indefinitely. No, I said it's good up to two years. Okay. Yeah, right. I said it lasts a couple Sorry, of years. No, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it won't be indefinite, but it'll be better than the other. Robert, how much time do you want more meeting? Um, I'm almost done. I know. I'm sorry. Um, communications. Plan ahead with your family where to meet if an emergency happens. Have a fire plan. Show how kids. Show your kids how to get out of the windows, where to go, so you can count, be counted for. Discuss where you will go if there's a mandatory evacuation, like flooding or wildfires or riots. Plan now. If it happens when several people are not home, where will you rendezvous? Where will you know where people are? Um, Unless there's a, th a direct threat to your home or a direct evacuate order, usually shelter in place is best. You have a roof, shelter from elements, your own supplies, and protection. Home field advantage. You know the hiding places and escape routes and what neighbors will have your back. Coordinate with like-minded neighbors about neighborhood watch if you're lucky enough to have good neighbors. 
That's a whole other question. Look into getting walkie-talkies, handheld and base units, and CB radios, and even shortwave receivers and or hand licensing. Learn, you can learn about that online. Um, we have links there for that stuff on the handout. Uh, landlines will usually work even if electricity is out, if it's a hardwired landline. Now our Verizon phones are often unreliable. This last Tuesday our landline was out and our Verizon had no signal. My wife could still text a message. We got our phone back about a day later. Uh, okay, the go bag information is on your handout. Now, this is a recommendation. Don't discuss prepping in depth with anyone except like-minded people. You don't need others to come and take your supplies if times get difficult. Um, think about it, just how far might some of your coworkers or acquaintances be willing to go to, to feed their children themselves or themselves if they have no supplies? If you want to ask some non-committal questions about what someone thinks about the state of world affairs, you can start to get a better feel for their opinions and whether or not they share your worldview. Then you can make friends with like-minded people and help each other. Access your locks and doors, assess your locks and doors, doors and windows, may possibly add security screws into the frames and wall, but not just into the jams. Use deadbolts and security doors that have a key opening on the inside. Now, in rentals, key opening on the inside is illegal, but you can do it in your own home. That prevents someone from breaking the window, reaching in, unlocking your door, and walking in. Um, consider getting boards to cover windows, cut to size in case of a storm or other damage to keep out looters, bad weather and label which ones go where, and you can get screws and nails to put them on. Now, this is the last point, and this is important. Self-defense, that's another discussion. It's a whole other topic. But you will need to determine for yourself what are you willing to do to protect you and your loved ones. How far will you go? How much will you let someone hurt your wife, your husband, your children? Who will, who will defend them when the police can't come because they are busy elsewhere? And chances are the police are going to be busy elsewhere, if you can even get a hold of them. Um, prices of firearms and ammo are also going up every day. If you're going to plan to use a firearm, take a course and train in it. Go to ranges, indoor and outdoor, build muscle memory. Minimize any chances of accidents. I had a senior ask me one day, she said, you know, I, I um, I'm thinking I should get a firearm, she says, but I've never used a gun before. I said, well, do you have the money for the firearm? Do you have the money to go practice the, with the firearm? And can you, can you put the time into it? She says, I just don't have the money to do it. I said, then don't do it. Because they're going to pull it away from you and use it on you. You have to have, a firearm has to be second nature to you. It has to be an attachment of your body. You have to be so accustomed to that firearm that, it, that, it, that you just do it without even thinking. So... I think. Okay, then there's the Blessed Virgin Mary remedy is on the back page of your sheets. Um, for those of you who are interested, this works. We've been passing this out for many years, and it's amazing. So thank you very much for your time. I'll be available afterwards for questions.